Hello and welcome back to the channel. You've joined myself, Dr. James Gill, for another clinical skills video. Today we're going to be looking at assessment of the ankle, which is one of the more common injuries that people get, particularly in their younger lives if they're engaging with sport. So in terms of um, assessing the ankle, obviously we need to introduce ourselves. Hello, my name's Dr. Gill. I've been asked to do an assessment of your ankle. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. So before we start off, could we please confirm if you've got any pain to either foot? I do, I've got pain on my right foot. Okay, so we've identified where the source of the pain is, and we're going to be very cautious when it comes to the examination, so not to exacerbate things. So could you please confirm your name and date of birth? Otavi Salvi, 4th of the January 2000. Okay, and uh, do you mind if we do this examination today? Okay. So just to clarify, that's going to involve you getting to walk up and down, getting you to lie on the bed where we'll have a look at how your ankle looks. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be pressing around your ankle and doing some movements which might generate some pain. Are you still happy to proceed? Yes. Super. So if you could stand up for me, please. And if you could walk forward and come back. So we're initially looking at the gait, making sure that we can't see any evidence of an antalgic gait, any signs of a limp. Um, that we've got normal symmetry and a regular pattern to it. Now we're going to make it ever so slightly more difficult by getting you to walk um, on your tiptoes if you can and walk forwards for me. So by um, seeing if you can walk on his tiptoes we're assessing the calf strength as well and if there's any other problems with the ankle that might be affected from the joint and there are no obvious issues there. And again a different form of um, complication if you could walk on your heels please forwards. So again, looking at a different movement of the ankle, and also this might cause increased pain if we've got issues um, with impingements here. So no obvious issues. If we can just get you to stand with your feet shoulder width apart, and I'm having a look around the ankles, um, making sure I'm looking from the front um, to make sure I can't see any scars, that we've got normal symmetry, that the feet are sitting uh, correctly, um, and checking from behind, I'm wanting to see if I can see any sun, uh, any evidence of the feet rolling in and again any signs that we may have issues with the Achilles tendons. So with that in mind, can I get you to jump up on the bed for me please and lie on your back to start off with. So at this point I'm having another overview of the ankles uh, and the legs generally to see if I can see any obvious issues. There's nothing here apparent so then we move on to palpation and the first thing I'm going to do is use the back of my hand go all the way down both legs checking for any issues with temperature. The reason being here is if we've got injuries, so we've got um, strains and sprains, that could potentially cause um, heat and erythema. Conversely, in the same way that our hands can be affected by rheumatoid arthritis, our feet are very much the same. So we may see swelling and if we squeeze over them, pain to the metatarsal phalangeal joints which might also indicate potential problems with the ankle. Similarly, we may get pain and erythema on the ankle itself or on the foot if we're looking at things like gout. Obviously having found no issues here, we then want to carry on from our look feeling uh, approach. So when we're assessing the foot with our initial palpation, it helps, it helps if we can do it in a systematic fashion and know what we're pressing. So I would recommend that once we've assessed temperature, we start off uh, at the base of the uh, fibula on the lateral um, uh, malleolus. From there we can press around uh, up to the ATFL ligament, which is the most commonly damaged ligament in uh, the foot. We can then move around to the uh, base of the fifth metatarsal, which is a very common source of stress fractures in athletes. From there we can move along the other tarsal bones, again making sure there's no pain or discomfort. At this point we can move back to pressing around the calcaneus, which forms the heel. We then want to move to the medial side of the foot, whereupon we can feel the, um, the tubercle of the naviculus and that lets us get into position to press around to the front. Now the reason why that's important is we want to plantar flex the foot which allows us to press along the dome of the talus. Now this is very important because if there's pain in that area it supports perhaps inflammation or tissue damage which is then aggravated when we dorsiflex the foot uh, and causing pain due to um, anterior impingement at this point here. 
carrying around medially, we're going to come to the medial malleolus and make sure there's no discomfort or tenderness over the deltoid ligament. So we're going to palpate around all of the major landmarks. Please make sure you tell me if there's any discomfort at all. So we start off on uh, the lateral malleolus, so around the fibular head, and that's also letting us press um, over the ATFL ligament. We can drop down here to press over the base of the fifth metatarsal, which is a very common fracture site in athletes and may cause pain radiating up. We want to press along the tailor bones to see if there's any discomfort here. And then moving round to the medial side, we want to find the tubercle of the naviculus and use that to come around across the front underneath the tibia. And we're going to plan to flex the foot in order to be able to press in the dome of the talus, which may be an, another source of pain and discomfort, because here we're able to press slightly inside the joint. Carrying around medially, we're going to come to the medial malleolus. We're going to press around to see if there's any pain there, and similarly, if there's any issues with the deltoid ligament. We're going to complete our examination in terms of palpation by pressing around the calcaneus, making sure there's no obvious discomfort there to the heel and the base of the heel. We would repeat the same on the opposite side. Having not found any obvious issues here, we then want to move on to movement. So we'll do um, active movements first. So if you could try and, uh, if you could move your feet up to your head as best you can. Okay. And then push your feet away. Super. And relax for me. And if you could turn your feet in for me. Okay. And turn them out. So we've got our dorsiflexion, our plantar flexion, and our eversion and inversion. Um, if you could uh, screw your toes up for me. Okay, and then try and lift your toes up to your head. Brilliant. Now we're then going to move, uh, go on to passive movement. So I'm going to do all of the movements that we've just done. So I'm going to dorsiflex the foot, I'm going to plantar flex the foot, I'm going to invert, and I'm going to evert, all the while checking the range of movement and that I'm not generating any pain as we do so. The other thing I want to do at this point is grasp the uh, ankle and I'm going to forcefully move forwards to see if there's any anterior movement here. Um, so we may look at things like hypermobility or perhaps ligament injuries where we get more than one centimetre worth of movement. That's important because that hypermobility or ligament injury might suggest an instability of the ankle and thus a great chance of injuries occurring. We then need to look at the toes. So I'm going to passively um, flex and then extend the toes, looking for any reduction in movement. And that's very much the case for the, uh, the great toe, the hallux, where again, I'm going to passively extend and flex the toe, looking for any reduction in range of movement. They, uh, the toes and the great toe here are very important because if they're not moving sufficiently, it might mean that we get impaired movement of the ankle, again, causing pain. With no obvious issues of that, we want to do some resisted movements. So stop me moving your foot, okay, and stop me moving your foot. Okay, I'm going to turn your foot, don't let me move your foot. Okay, and I'm going to turn your foot again, don't let me move your foot. You can um, say, push me away, pull me back to you, but that is slightly complex for some patients. And I find it's much easier from a communication standpoint to say, don't let me move your foot and have the patient stay exactly where they are. Having not found any obvious issues here, I then need you to lie on your front and shuffle backwards a bit so your feet are hanging off the bed. So at this point, we're going on to assess the Achilles tendon. We can do an overview where there's no obvious scars. It doesn't appear to be any discontinuity in the tendon. And similarly, both feet are sitting normally. If we did have a rupture to the Achilles tendon, then we may find in this position, there was an increased um, a, a dorsiflexion of the foot because of loss of contraction from the Achilles tendon. So we want to press down, looking for any pain but also looking to see if we can find any thickening to the Achilles tendon, or if there's any discontinuity, any steps here. So we're going to go down both sides, and it also allows us to confirm there's no evidence of calf pain that might suggest a DVT. 
Now, once we've gone all the way down the Achilles tendon, we need to press in where the insertion is, and that may be quite sore, so we need to be cautious there. I'm then going to confirm that everything is intact by um, dorsiflexing the foot, putting some pressure there, and squeezing over the calf. This is, uh, this is Thompson's test, and the movement of the calf will cause a slight contraction to the Achilles tendon, meaning we get um, forced plantar flexion of the foot, so confirming that the Achilles tendon is intact. Okay, so the final thing that we can do here is we can move the foot up and we can do two additional tests to look for evidence of anterior impingement or posterior impingement. Forcefully plantar flex in the foot, causing compression on the posterior of the ankle. So if we get pain here, then we would be expecting to find on an MRI evidence of the impingement. And similarly, we're going to dorsiflex the ankle, um, as much pressure as we can without causing undue discomfort from movement. And if we get any pain here, then we'd identify, again, a potential source of anterior uh, impingement. At this point, we can also check for hypermobility by uh, grasping the calcaneus, holding onto the leg and moving forwards and pulling backwards and moving forwards to see if we can get excess movement. So we haven't found any obvious issues here other than a slight uh, discomfort around the uh, edge of the joint line. So we'd want to organise a scan um, on this patient to identify what the source of that pain was, but otherwise I wouldn't be too concerned at the moment and maybe think about anti-inflammatories and rest for the time being. So they're the issues that we found at the moment. Do you have any questions for myself, sir? Yeah. Super. Well, thank you very much for your time. I'll let you get your socks and shoes. Thank you.